I don't think that not having arts in communities is the answer. I think having more art everywhere so that it doesn't feel like this is a luxury that only certain people have. I do think is there's a big change going on in public art right now where there's more money that would have just gone to straight permanent public art that's getting routed to more social purposes. Either you sort of focus your attention on things that are broken and need to be fixed or you focus your attention on things that are working and need to be celebrated. You know, people want to say, so you're going to build a mural or paint a mural? That's what they think public art is. You can design an awesome park, for example, but if you haven't thought about the cultural groups that are actual users of the space and how programmatically they can get engaged over time, you might not have a park that anybody uses. If we're all doing our jobs well, we've just created environments and opportunities for social engagement and perhaps some kind of moment of just feeling humanity. And whether the people think of it as art or not is much less important. So yeah, we met in a restaurant. When I was in school, that's how I paid my bills. I worked at an Italian artisan sandwich shop. And I think that's the place where I first connected to kind of an immigrant workforce and thinking about how people in the industry are treated and how mobility is really difficult. We moved to LA in, in 2010. Right away, we noticed that the job market for restaurant work was super saturated. Looking for work was really hard and very competitive. That's kind of how we came to start working with food and to start thinking about what food does for people and how it can help to grow community and to sustain community. The first thing that people jump to, of course, is like, oh, are you going to make some murals, right? So I, I always say, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm pretty doubtful that I'm going to make some murals. What I'm more interested in is kind of the choreography of the space and how we can kind of help to play with that. I came here when I was in eighth grade from South Korea, so going to college came upon me very quickly, so I had to decide what I wanted to study, and my parents, like many other immigrant parents, they wanted me to do either law or medicine. But I met a friend, and I didn't know what she was studying. I just heard what she was taking. Anthropology, cultural history, calculus, and like a painting. And I thought, what major are you? And she said architecture. Brian comes from an architecture background. I come from an environmental science and fine art background. Our work's really site-specific. We don't really have an idea until we go to the site, feel it, experience it, understand who the community is, sort of research around it. I tend to look for like an environmental focus. Brian, you would maybe look at more culture and history and then we sort of interweave those things together. My comfort zone, I guess, is being a painter, where I really like just having to be in my studio and solve problems by myself. But then there's this other aspect of my career, which is public art. And I've been invited, you know, a few times in the past to do some pub public artworks. And that brings another part of the story because you get to work with the community, get them involved. There is no singular voice here or mine. It's really about so many people influencing each other. Sometimes the process kind of opens up the whole set of opinions and dialogue, both positive and negative. This is the whole part of the public practice, right? Art is murals, art is painting. How is food art? How is a potluck art? I believe that the act of relationship building, gathering people together who wouldn't normally gather, the act of cooking together, I think that whole package is art. This is the, uh, the East Rancho Dominguez Park, and this is the new addition to the uh, building. So my design is going to be basically based on the history of the community in Compton. And also I'm bridging East Rancho Dominguez Park with the Adobe Museum of the Dominguez family. The project's going to be this painted mural, which the LA Conservation Corps are going to help me paint. They're about five or six 18-year-old uh, kids. It's true that my name is on this, but it's also just not me. There's just a lot of creative people making this happen. And when I come with any problems, they come up with really great solutions. So usually by trusting other people, these projects turn out to be better than I expected them to be. Just different generations of what it can look like and how it engages with the fact that inside the courtyard we have a tree in here. So this is basically what we're looking at. We're looking at a trellis system 
with integrated planters at its base that kind of follow that same contour. We have numerous other ideas, but I think this is pretty much maxing us out. I just don't see the green green stamp of kind of innovation here and real sort of like creative nuance. What makes you proud of this? This is definitely not something you can go to the store and buy. Every single part is custom. And I, I'm having a hard time kind of experiencing yeah. that from the... I'm trying to get to a point where the, the concept feels more relevant to you or it feels a little bit stronger. I'll admit that there's numerous things that need to be refined in this, but usually they get refined in kind of... Often they get refined in the process of production. Very clear that we just didn't want this to be a mural project, that, that we were open to you know, landscaping projects, sculpture projects, social practice projects, any and all projects that seem to sort of address this issue of how places are vandalized or why they're vandalized, and then attempting to sort of develop solutions around what we found to be sort of contributing factors to that vandalism. So what I think we tried to do was focus projects on changing people's attitudes and behaviors around a particular place. So I'm an artist and I work with the Los Angeles County Arts Commission and part of what I do is work on how to think about public engagement in relationship to civic art projects. Like we are just hoping to be able to have some conversation with you tonight and get some of your reactions. I love this spot. It's big and clean and, and safe. Yeah, I run the um, third and older basketball clinic on Wednesday night. We teach more than just basketball, social skills. I love to come to this park to play basketball. I just like the, the atmosphere. I like the way people have a good time. It's, you know, never no backbiting. You know. Ever since I moved here, I love the park. It's like get away from like school and stuff, and they've helped me out a lot. I'm away from home. <laughs> Baby showers, karate classes, dance classes, really multicultural. I've never experienced anything bad since I've been coming here. Well, again, just thank you so much for your time. We'll just plan to see you back here for sure on the 25th of February. All right. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Sarah, and I'm with the Los Angeles County Arts Commission in the Civic Art Program. We're going to be able to put a new work inside of the courtyard to make it more like a gadget. Uh, I like about the library is that um, it's quiet. It's quiet? Activities like this. Nice. It's community. Yes, it's yeah. nice. We're also thinking about um, kind of curating art book cards that can come out. So you can use this like a reading room. Would you ever be interested in helping us choose books? Okay. You know, certain workshops or programming that you might like to see here or something that you feel like your children would be interested in? Anything like this, I mean, for me it went really well. People came up with some good ideas of how they might program the space or what they would like to see or some ideas that I wouldn't have thought of because, you know, it's things that interest them. I think I learned a lot from the history that I didn't know before, which is why I also wanted to be here with, like, the rest of them. So I wasn't just take, leading a tour, but I was also on the tour. It was pretty amazing. So I think it was important to be here to learn the history and why is that place called East Rancho Dominguez Park. When we started distributing the flyers, I mean, I just didn't know what kind of people were RSVP. But I was really happy to hear that they were all like, like local many years being in the, in the community. And I think that was like perfect. Like what, what do we really know of Compton? You know, it's just really like just gang activity and stuff like that. And then you just kind of start seeing this community, you know, and their stories. And so that's that shit. Yeah, I wanted to include that shape into the park just to bring the connection between this and the park. So I feel like now that it, more people in the community know where this idea is coming from, now they'll be able to distribute that information to other people in the community, which is why it was important for me to explain to them what I'm doing. We asked you all to think about what kind of structure you wanted to design and many of you said I want a pond, I want a little park, I want like flowers and we realized wow you guys like natural things. And we decided to make a structure that protects you from the harsh sun. So we're calling it a canopy or a shade structure. So this is what you see when you look through the microscope of the butterfly. 
What? Um, a, cal a caliper changes and goes into a chrysalis, then when it's ready to come out, it's a chrysalis, then the um, wings start coming out. It becomes a butterfly, right? I, I do think it is a service that we are providing in a way to give form to their voice. When I came here as a 13-year-old, straight from Korea, I hardly spoke English. My parents were working. They dropped me off at a county library. And I, that was my babysitter. So hopefully this canopy can you know, really facilitate the, the library's mission. There's been like a lot of moisture. I'm kind of worried about... Oh, it's looking really nice. I have the Los Angeles Conservation Corps is coming out. When we painted these walls, they brought out a crew of 10 teenagers. They did a great job. We don't know who, but one of the kids dipped their fingers into a little bit of the paint and then did some graffiti work in the bathroom. So yeah, there was a little bit of graffiti during the graffiti abatement project. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I oh, cut yesterday. Uh -huh. Come about four more inches down and that's my mark right there. I need to go about two more inches up. Of course, it's metal, right? Tell me that. We just brought in the plants, and the idea is that we're going to plant this concrete planter. And we have these cables on the wall. So the idea is that you'd have this green area, um, this little garden. This is the reading garden, or we're calling it um, Rise and Shine. Last piece, and then we just got a little touch up paint work to do, and then uh, that'll be it. Yesterday was really difficult. It was raining. And then this morning getting here was really crazy. We lose light really early, you know, like at 4.30. And then we'll just go as late as we can to put the rest of the soils on. that important when I was young because it's very important to have a park somewhere you can go to and call home. This is our um, event to look forward to come to Victoria Park. I want my girls to uh, so be come close to me and know water? all these things. Why home cooking is very important to me 
And I just found out there was just a lot of love that was here at Victoria Park in Carson. I noticed that it takes a village to raise a child. And I see the village is here. It went great. We had a fabulous turnout. It's a very diverse group. And one of the goals was to get all of those folks in the room together, tasting each other's food and conversation and celebration together. So I really feel like in that sense, yes, that goal was like definitely achieved tonight. Guy, man. How are you doing? Good, how you doing? Good. And so this piece is one of the series of initiatives where we are applying arts-based solutions to promote civic engagement. You've got to know your history. Somebody said, if you don't know where you've been, you don't know where you're going. I'm glad that it's not just about me. I'm glad that it's about the whole community. You know, we, we gave our opinion when we uh, went with you guys to the East Rancho over there and then to actually see it here in our neighborhood, it feels really good, you know, to have been part of that. Bien contenta, feliz. Uy, se me opportunity with the award gratitude so thank you for all your support and really teaching our team what it means to engage the public and how to create not just public art but civic art so I really walk away knowing what it means to be a citizen so thank you we didn't really realize what we're getting into we're like joking at one point it's like there was no easy part of the fabrication and mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the way we designed it or what, but... With this one, I think the form and the shape, the size, the metaphor, uh, and the meaning, and how this piece relates to the people and this place took precedence, so that the detailing had, had to kind of make all that stay alive. Get, so. get us when we can have a glass of wine and talk. Oh, I'm so proud of you. You're as happy as I am to be here today. Why don't you just put your hands together and give a big round of applause. We also have civic art as a vehicle to transform the library. You ought to say art matters. What was a vacant and underutilized courtyard is now a functional and inspiring space and please don't leave here today without seeing it for yourself. So so much brighter. I just think the paint color choice is amazing. The way it's working with the sunlight and also again just how it creates this lightness and movement in the room. I mean the other thing that's really hopeful to me is how there's this other programmatic space and just even like this that it works like a performance space into the library. They love, love it. it. it is they love it. It's so architecture. It's art and architecture together. Is that what you mean? That's a good observation. Wow. Yeah, you want to touch it? Mm -hmm. I got the... See, you can smell, you smell the difference over here? It's called a gooseneck fern. What is this? Oh, it kind Those of feels like a goose. little berries that the fern makes. You know, a challenge for us was justifying these as graffiti abatement projects, but this was something altogether different, and the hypothesis was really that it wasn't necessarily about what the final product was, but the engagement and uh, community's participation and and buy-in uh, to what you were doing was actually the most important thing. I really think it's important that we all pay taxes and that as much as it can go to building a street or building a library or paying for the police or something else, it also can go to art. You know, a lot of these people come to the library several times a week. It's like an extra living room in their life. Art can help 
with just growth of a person and a community and it also just again captures the life it captures the stories and what's important to those people that place so to me investing in public art it's about getting that acknowledgement embedded into the everyday as opposed to art being in more isolated spaces like an art museum i want to have it come out to where people are actually living their lives where they're making decisions about how they're going to live their life how they're going to interact with each other i like that art's right there to see people this engaged with where they are and with each other, to feel again like different races and cultures can come together and spend time together, different generations can find a space and still connect. I mean, that's amazing. It's like a library, but it's also a cultural center. It's phenomenal. We're, we're all people at, at the end of the day, and you can become part of a community even if you are not from there. I have worked in lots of different neighborhoods and just being there and getting to know people, I think it engenders a sense of, you know, trust that people need to see that you are there and you are working in their best interest and you have their best interest at heart. Although our toolbox is a creative one, you know, we are, we are artists, we are creatives working in this space. It's really about helping communities reach their, their dreams and their aspirations and their hopes. So I-